So when we look at the definition of an engine, the definition of an engine is the box. That's not a box. <laughs> Hi, right, as Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today this is the first episode of Engine 101 where I go through the very basics all the way through to some really complicated stuff at the end where we start getting out the mathematics and physics and basically explore everything that's in between. So this series, you might be uh, a guy who thinks you know, or a girl who thinks you know exactly how engines work and all the rest of it, but I beg to differ with a lot of you. Um, there is a lot of things that we kind of just take for granted but don't fully understand and so forth and that is what this series is about. So we're going to start off really slow, um, very basic and all the rest of it, but we're going to go through the full process of how engines, uh, how internal combustion engines actually work. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, the energy release and all the rest of it. Why do we even make internal combustion engines? what an internal combustion is versus a, an external combustion engine. You know, obviously we're, we're signifying the fact that this is internal, so we need to basically understand what an external combustion is and all the rest of it. So, what are we trying to do with an engine? So what we are trying to do with an engine is we are trying to extract energy to do work. So, in other words, and we'll relate all of these base, all of these videos to motorcycles because this is a motorcycle uh, channel. So, what are we trying to do? We are trying to extract energy from something to propel us, which is the work from here to over there, and have a load of fun and wheelies while we do it. So, there is energy trapped in a source, and the, the engine itself is the mechanism that converts or basically releases or liberates the energy from something into actual work. So the energy is basically just what we call a fuel and our fuels are, you know, we have loads of different fuels. We have LP, uh, LPG, we have um, petrol, gasoline, diesel, we have avgas. There's loads of different um, fuels that we can use and the majority of which, coal, there's another one, but the majority of which are petroleum based products from crude oil and what have you. And we'll do a video in this series about basically how we get this horrible black sludge under the oceans into your tank so you can use it to release energy and do some work. So the first thing we have to look at in a sense is how the actual entire process works. So we have an energy source energy we have an energy source and then we have an engine engine so what we do is we put an energy source in and out of it we get work and as a waste product unfortunately we have heat now this is all to do with thermodynamics and we're not going to go in that right now but the thermodynamics is the study of the transfer and the dynamics of heat. So you cannot put energy in, get work out without waste heat. Every single engine, and that's all an engine is, is something that basically uses energy to produce work um, or basically liberates or releases energy to do work. There is always waste heat. You cannot, it is physically impossible. It is physics, it's like the speed of light. You cannot do it without there being a waste heat product to this. This is either uh, for engines, obviously you have an exhaust, so heat's going out there, things get hot, your engine gets hot, so it radiates out heat. You have your radiator, your cooling system that basically removes some of this waste heat. You have. Um, waste heat in the form of friction between all your components inside things are rubbing against other stuff hence why we need lubrication the lubrication the oil itself that heats up and we need to cool that down or it transfers its heat to other things like stuff inside you know like your actual uh, frame or you know, between your thighs you can feel the engine you can feel the exhaust heating up waste heat is absolutely everywhere and this is where the efficiency of engines comes into it because inside your 
energy, whatever it is, say it's a litre of petrol or a litre of diesel, it could be 50 milligrams, it doesn't matter, there's 100% of the energy that that contains. How much energy is in there? You know, it could be 160 uh, kilojoules, it can be whatever, it can be whatever the value is, that's what you start off with, so it's 100%. How much of this energy is transferred into energy we can test? And for engines, you know, we use um, dynamometers and stuff like that, basically we use uh, test equipment that will measure the amount of energy that this engine is producing, and whatever that energy, whatever that percentage is, is always based on how much fuel is going in. So, uh, not how much fuel, how much energy is in that fuel. So, the start, you know, so basically you're starting, what you're starting off with, your litre of petrol has whatever it has. Um, Energy-wise, that's what we start with, that's 100%. How much of that is actually converted, you know, we can measure this. And if we say, you know, this is um, 35%, then we know just off the back of it, um, that a lot of it, not all of it, because there are other wastes as well, you know, um, parasitic losses and stuff like that. Sound is usually a good one, no matter what it is, if it's an electric motor, if it's a diesel engine or what have you, sound is one of the things. And even light, this is the thing, even light is a waste. You have arcing with um, electric motors, with engines, there is a flame front in there, there is light, you know what I mean? And you do not, and a, and a, a, a mechanical engine, like a piston driven engine, does not use light to power itself. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, heat is radiated out through um, thermal radiation, you know, through infrared, and at the end of the day, that is light. So basically, if 35% of your work from your 100% is actually work we can use, you know, to, to, to propel you along, then basically we call this a heat engine because it uses heat to perform uh, these tasks. You know, we are basically trying to create heat and it's the heat that we get to do work. We call this a heat engine, but at the end of the day, heat, oscillations of atoms, and when they eject that, um, you know, when they reject that energy or basically go to a lower energy state, it comes out as light, you know, as infrared light. So basically, in a sense, we create a light engine more than anything, you know, it's an engine that creates like it's either thermal light, infrared light and then frequencies, or it's physical light that we can see in the spectrum. Sound is the only other one, that's just vibrations through the actual air. And, you know, if you can hear your engine, if you can hear an electric motor whining, you know, sound is being produced and that's energy being lost as well. So let's have a look, now we've done that, let's have a look specifically at uh, the engines that we are interested in, the reason why you're even watching this series in the first place. So we call um, internal combustion engines if they are, and external combustion engines, heat engines. So let's start with external combustion first. So we have combustion, which is a chemical reaction. Combustion is a chemical reaction. It's a chemical reaction. And it's an exothermic, which basically exo means outside of, as in it releases. Exo and thermic means heat. So you've got exo and thermic, so we've got a heat releasing chemical reaction. That's what happens. Excess heat is released. And through combustion, we use this exothermic reaction to increase the pressure. So we use combustion. Uh, like I say, which is an exothermic reaction, so basically it releases um, energy in the form of heat because the energy is locked inside our fuel. So, put fuel there, that's where our combustion, that's what we have to combust, and when we're talking about hydrocarbons and all the rest of it, we have to plus oxygen because that's what combustion is. It is an oxidation, basically. So it's, it's like we're rusting the fuel. We are oxidising it and because the oxygen um, at, the, at the correct temperatures at the right energy levels oxygen will basically squeeze in there and release basically break up that molecule and all the energy in there that was um, stored away inside the molecule so to speak is now liberated and released this is released as heat 
which is like I said the exothermic part of it, it's releasing and it's heat and then we need to transfer this in either two ways, we can either transfer this um, to a fluid, uh, fluid. this fluid then, um, can, we can then move this fluid around to um, certain components that can extract this energy by using pressure. So we can either give it to a fluid and then we end up with pressure, which is like a steam engine. So in this process we oxidise a few, uh, we oxidise a fuel, which would be coal, we use the air in the atmosphere, the oxygen in the atmosphere, we then um, bring it up to temperature so this reaction can take place, this thermo, this exothermic reaction, this releases more and more heat, we then transfer this to a fluid, which would be water in this case, um, and this fluid can then be pumped around, it can then be moved around to uh, certain components to increase the pressure of that system, because we have a direct relationship between the temperature and the pressure of a system and we'll go into that in the next video but we use this pressure and pressure is force applied to a surface area so you know this whiteboard has a surface area and if we push um, against the entire whiteboard with a certain force we can work out the pressure because it is pressure is force over a certain surface area a defined surface area or what we can do is we can actually use the uh, the air, the air as our fluid and oxygen that it contains, we can actually use that um, to increase the pressure. So that's what happens. In, whoa, that's what happens in an internal combustion engine. Um, so the difference between the two, between an external and an internal, is all to do with the definition of an engine. So to define the difference between a uh, internal and external combustion engine. Both processes with steam and just say a gasoline engine or a diesel engine is all about the box. So we have this box which we have labelled, we have given this box a name which is an engine. But what is actually the engine? Well the engine is where we extract work from whatever process we are using. So with a steam engine where does the combustion happen? Well, the combustion is the reaction between oxygen in the air and our fuel. And we've got basically a coal box, or otherwise known as a furnace. Might as well furnace correctly. Um, so we have a coal box, a furnace. This is what we have um, with a steam engine. And then that combustion process uh, then heats a boiler and that boiler transfers um, or the fluid in that boiler is then transferred through a lot of valving to the actual engine which is where our piston um, and our cylinder lives and so this is the engine that's when that pressure that heat and the pressure we have got with our working fluid which is the water this is where the pressure that that um, the pressure that water is under and the heat that that the energy the heat that that water possesses is actually um, inside this box is where the mechanism that extracts that energy lives in a sense and that's what we call the engine and when you look at this our coal furnace our coal box or our furnace here basically you know our fire is external to this engine. Now with an IC engine, so this is steam, this here is the steam part of it, so this is steam, which is right over the top, so this is steam, with our internal combustion engine we have a fuel tank, so this is our fuel, we have, I don't know, the air, and we put both of these inside the cylinder where the piston lives as well, and that is the engine, and then this is where the combustion takes place. So you can quite clearly see that this is why a, um, I won't say, I'll just say petrol, I won't want to say IC because that would be obvious. Um, this is where a petrol and diesel engine, um, that process, its combustion happens inside the actual engine itself. So the combustion takes place where the work is extracted. Where with a steam engine, the combustion is external 
to the actual engine, what we actually call the engine. Now you might turn around and say the whole thing's called a steam engine, that's just what people call it when we're talking about um, engineering and physics and all the rest of it. This is the actual engine where the, in that volume where the actual work is extracted from that energy production or that energy release, so to speak. I don't want to say the word production because that's wrong. Um, so you can see the difference between the two. So in the next episode we'll start to look at how we actually obtain this and why is it better to have internal combustion engine. Why is that the next progressive step um, versus the actual steam engine. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.